Hey, hey, how's everyone doing? Welcome back. It's SSC time, boys. So this is one of the most requested dungeon guides I've got so far. It is to do SSC, Shadow Spire Cathedral. Um, if you're searching for this dungeon, I feel like you already have a basic grasp of the other dungeons. So chances are you know how to get there already. And if that's the case, go ahead and skip forward about a minute or so into the video. But for those of you who are brand new, who just want to make it onto SSC for the first time, check it out, scavenge. I'm going to show you how to get there by running. Keep in mind, there are ruined libraries. You can shift gate if you have chivalry, ask for a little assistance. But if you don't know how to get there and you want to run there for the first time, we're going to go ahead and do that. So if you take a look at the map now, we're at Anchor's Rest. If you don't know how to get to Anchor's Rest, go to Shelter Island, hit the Moon Gate, Anchor's Rest. Run up to the pulley system right there or the pink moon gate run through up to the north side or the south side. I've shown you guys how to get there from the south side. I'm going to run the north side this time around. So, all right, let's get right into it. All right, so you're going to want to run north out of Anchor's Rest and then go west. I typically like to use cardinal directions, you guys, so that's what I'm going to do. What you see on the screen, to my left, it's west. To my right, it's east. For you guys, it's going to be the opposite, but... For the uh, sake of the video, I'm going west. So you can just follow the pathway all the way there for the most part. There's really nothing too dangerous as long as you don't go up and attack anything on top of this uh, snowy mountain here until we actually get to SSC, which we're already almost there. It takes less than a minute. All right. So like in the scavenging video, I did talk about what was here at the entrance. And if you're looking to farm SSC, you're not going to have any trouble killing these skeletal archers, lich magus. The only thing you might run into are some reds. <laughs> uh, but if there are reds here, run right inside. This is SSC right here. Take a look at the map in the upper right. There's a moon gate right here and one directly ahead. Okay, so SSC level one. I'm going to change my aspect up. I know I need to farm void uh, for the video, though. I'm just not going to. You know what? I take it back. We'll do Void Weapon, Air Armor. Okay, so we got a Thief already off the bat. I'm not going to bother with Thieves. You guys know what they're about, I'm sure, already. I'm going to go over level 1 in depth. Uh, Yellow Moon Gate, you can recall out if you need to. But our first mob here is a Mud Gargoyle, and then a Frost Method, and then a Winged Hulk. Uh-oh, Red's ahead. I'm just going to keep going, guys. All right, so these gargoyles here are probably the most difficult mobs on level one, golden being the most difficult. However, they're all equally as dangerous, in my opinion, because of the ability um, they do, which is like a mud spray or an iron bullet machine gun style. The golden gargoyle does it too. I believe it's called gold dust. It's a special ability they do once, I believe, every 15 seconds, give or take five-ish seconds. If you're not defensed out or have a pet tanking for you it can kill you it, it'll almost do 100 damage as long as you're wearing leather armor cloth don't have high level of defense or aspect it can kill you uh, what you do not want to do is run past two gargoyles at the same time if they have the spray aspect in this case uh, that would be the mud gargoyle gold and iron don't worry so much about the blood gargoyles they just do a bleed this is what i just killed as a method as well those methods, they come in the Frost, Fire, Poison, Eldritch, and I believe Iron. They also all have some specials. I wouldn't say any of them besides the Frost method are truly that dangerous. Sorry, take it back. The Poison one too, especially if you're a Dexer. Um, but they drop roughly 800 to 1,000 gold to kill. Same thing with these Winged Hulks here. The only thing the Winged Hulks do, uh, they're just pure melee. They will reduce your accuracy. I don't know if they do anything else like uh, reduce your mana regen or anything, but uh, you won't be hitting as often. They're not dangerous though. You could take it on as aspect tier two as long as you have decent defense or have some pets to tank for you. All right, so we've got a Crimson Gargoyle, which is the red. Uh, it'll put a bleed on you. And then the Eldritch Method, it's special. It's just gonna reduce your magic resistance. And by the way, guys, uh, there's blasting going on around in the background right now. There's some construction maybe a quarter mile away from where I live. It's shaking the house. It sounds like Armageddon. Don't worry, it's not. The world's not ending. It's just some construction. So pay that no mind if it does occur. Hopefully it doesn't. But yeah, so 
Crimson Gargoyle, like all the Gargoyles, other than the Golden Gargoyle, is going to give you roughly 1,000 gold, um, 150 regs, magic items. It's a high-value mod. Everything in SSC is high-value. I wouldn't recommend, or recommend skipping a single mod. Go for whatever you can. And I'm going to highlight some of the more uh, dangerous ones like these reds here. Let's hope they don't kill me during the video. They may try. I'm going to go around the other way and just hope they don't. And if they do, I'll let them know I was doing a video. <laughs> Give them a quick shout out. Um, but level one's a great farm. This is the best place to scavenge. I'd say even work a fresh summoner. You can come down here and sick your earth or water ellies after them. It shouldn't be a big deal. You should be able to handle most everything in this place. As long as you're not the one taking the damage as a summoner or a necro. Uh, these stonekins, they're probably the weakest mobs up here. Uh, the fire and gargan stonekins. They just... That's their special. He throws a rock at you. <laughs> it's really nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll get roughly 700, 800 gold off these guys here. And that's pretty much level one in a nutshell. As you guys can see, if you look in the top right corner of my screen, I have the mini map. I'm going to go ahead and pull that over a little bit here for you. But that is the layout. It's a giant rectangle with a four corridors and one way to get down to level two, two yellow moon gates, one red moon gate. Um, this is the only place Rather, level one is the only level you're going to be able to exit from SSC on. Level two does not have a moon gate like all the other dungeons. And level three is more like a 2.5 or, if you will, a whole different area. You can go through moon gates to different locations. All right, so here's your red moon gate. And then we're almost at level two. But yeah, so Mud Gargoyle, I'll show you it's special here in a second. If it does it. Probably just did it a moment ago on the other person that was saying, there it is, right there. So you saw those numbers, minus one, minus two. Well, I've got air armor on. I'm running defensive stance. I'm running bulwark. I'm reducing the damage I take by 80% or so. So it's not going to hit me too hard as long as I'm standing still. But if you don't have any of those defensives, that will hit you for six to ten damage a hit per tick. It can kill you. So I would avoid it if you can. All right. If the reds aren't back down on this side, let's go ahead and head down to level two. Uh, SSC is fairly crowded. I'm not going to wait for more spawns, but it's a dense location. Uh, everywhere you go, there will be at least one or two mobs up for the most part, unless it's a society week and you've got 100 people down here. But here's level two. All right, let's go over the layout real quick. It's another big rectangle. Essentially, this is just the floor below the one we were just on. The layout's pretty much the exact same with two differences. There's a way to get to the courtyard, which is considered level three. And you can get to the boss rooms here. And the back of this area here has some of the hardest mobs in the game. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but this here is your Gargan stone skin, or is it a stone kin? It's your basic melee mob, has a lot of health, has, drops about 1,500 gold a kill. Its only special ability is that right there, shape stone. It's a stone nato, if you will. It's just throwing rocks. It's the similar theme as the gargoyles as well shooting a, a ton of different bullets at you, so to speak. I don't mind those at all. Like, it's something that I enjoy killing as a Dexter because, frankly, it really isn't all that much damage going out on me. Uh, but as a caster, you will be getting hit for maybe 6 to 10 a rock, and I think it throws out 5 to 6 of them, so it can hurt you pretty bad, and it's AoE. So you're only safe if you're LOSing or outdistancing it. All right, next mob here is a Spectral Warrior. Somewhat dangerous if you don't have high defenses, like everything down here. That's going to be the theme, guys. A lot of health, a lot of damage. Mobs that do a ton of single target, mobs that do a ton of AoE, but they all deal a lot of damage, all have a lot of health. One thing I will recommend is if this is your first time down here, don't pull more than one mob. <laughs> We're just getting rares today, aren't we, guys? All right. Yeah, so don't pull more than one mob unless you know you're incredibly tanking. As you can see, that bleed was hitting me for 16. If I have nothing to reduce the damage of that bleed at 16 a tick, and he's doing that every 10 to 12 seconds, that's a lot of consistent damage from a mob with that much health. All right, so let's go find another one that we haven't. Stone Shaper, by the way, was the name. All right, so a footman. This guy here, another 1,200-ish gold. He throws an ax at you, another melee guy. We've got a Scorcher to go with it. Scorcher is just AoE guy who goes invisible, drops on you, dealing almost like a bomb. Uh, he'll hit you kind of hard. 
Again, I know I just said I don't recommend trying to take on more than one mob at a time. I really don't, but I have a lot of defenses rolling right now, so I feel pretty comfortable doing it. The footman throws an axe. That axe, if you have low armor, let's say you're wearing leather, it'll hit you for about 40 to 50 damage. I mean, it's hit me in plate for that much sometimes. So careful with that guy if you're a caster. If you're a dexer, just have defensives up. Scorcher, it's just fire damage. You can mitigate it with a percent reduction. But it's going to drop a little right there. If you're quick enough, unlike me, or you can manipulate it, you can stand them right in the fire. Now, you're not going to see the damage ticking, but it is affecting it. I've tested this a few times now. If you had two or three mobs on you and you're more than comfortable tanking them all or positioning a, a pet to do it, wait for the Scorcher to drop down, position them all in that fire. They'll all be taking ticks. It's not going to be huge, but it'll help if you have multiple mobs on you. Um, I'd say the Scorcher drops the least amount of gold in the dungeon from what I understand. It might be roughly eight to 900, at least on this level, or 13 and I'm completely wrong. Everything seems to drop a ridiculous amount of gold down here, so no matter what you kill, you're not going wrong. Okay. Landscape-wise, there are a few things to look out for. That right there, where I'm circling, you got a chandelier. Run up the path in the middle, you'll be fine. Don't run into that flame shaper, and we'll get into that in a second. But if you run up the middle path here on the brown tiles, you will not trigger either of these chandeliers. Now, there are multiple going down each corridor and further into the dungeon itself. You will find chandeliers all over the place. I have died to a chandelier. I've seen many of people die to chandeliers. They pull a mob or two, think they're good. They're standing, say, right in Ranger, right about here. Two mobs on them, they're half health. Some dude decides, I'm just going to walk by and not care what I'm doing, who I'm pulling on who. Pops the chandelier, you're dead. They're dead. Everybody's dead. Does about half your health. Avoid it if you can. Pull mobs away a different direction if you can. Um, it'll take you... A little bit of time to get used to these chandeliers here. All right, now we have the two sides, corridors if you will, same theme as level one. Different types of mobs when you get to this section though. Uh, someone initially first called this the first T. If you look on the map to the top right, it's stuck with me ever since. Looks like the letter T here, then you have the second one. The first T, after these chandeliers, on the top left and bottom right, you're going to have different types of mobs. Up here, you're going to get a bishop, which is essentially a priest. It's a caster. He does a large AoE. You're going to get a horned devil. I'm going to try to pull one for the sake of the video here. Shouldn't have done that with a mob on me. Um, not comfortable right now. I'm going to move away. Get that started here again in a second. But like I said... Try not to pull too many. It's dangerous. These mobs, like, there goes half my health. No one really kills the Scorchers either, so if you're here farming, you may be uh, left with cleanup duty. People just don't like them. They tend to vanish, become a pain in the ass to find, drop on you for half your health. They're not fun mobs. Very similar to the Flame Shapers we'll get to in a second. I really want to get over there to that bishop, even with this, this guy on me here. I think I'm going to do it anyways, just to show you guys what this is all about. Okay. <clears throat> so again, a caster. Being the tank is right here, I assume. Nope. You know what? We're going to taunt it. I'll put it on me. It's fine. I know I have a Scorcher on me as well. That right there was the AoE. If you're not rolling high defensives, now that hit me for 9. I have like 80% damage reduction, if not higher. That's typically going to hit you for 30 to 50 if you don't have high damage reduction. And it's an AoE. Um, try to avoid it if you can. It's really difficult because it's fairly instant, but it is lethal like most other mobs down here. Everything down here is out to get you like everywhere else, but the difference is down here, every single mob has the ability to do so. Whereas most of the other dungeons really aren't that way. There you go, Chandelier, dude just lost half his health. Had I been standing there and the Scorcher hit me, I would have been close to 20%. Then somebody comes up and just wants to pop me. Would have been the end of me right there. Happened many a times. Alright. Horned Devil. Melee Mob, he tends to build up energy as you fight him. And he'll release that in melee AoE spurts called Devil Strikes. There you go. Had nothing built up so he didn't do a ton of damage with it. Um, should say in a second that he's charging his attack. Let's take a look. Okay. 
kill it so fast. Not really. Defensive stance. I'd rather be a little bit more comfortable down here doing the video than uh, trying to breeze through everything. I'm already almost maxed out on golden weight anyways. Typically with SSC as well, guys, I come down here and within 10 minutes, I've got a full pack of gold, magic items, rares, whatever it is, and I'm out. Yeah, it's tedious. Come down in 10 minutes, fill up my bags, go out, do it again. Kind of spend a lot of time going back and forth. But in terms of mob availability, this is the best dungeon. It's not even close. All right, on to the next mob. We've got a knight up here. If you're familiar with Aegis Keep, the knight decided to disappear, so we'll avoid him for a second. But if you're familiar with Aegis Keep, it's the same as those knights that swing their flails in a big circle. That's all it is. Just a beefed up version of that. It's got a ton more health, a ton more armor, does a ton more damage, drops a ton more gold. Oh. <laughs> like I said, SSC's a little dangerous, guys. Alright, good. We doomed it. It'll go down pretty quick. Now, typically with these demons, I'll put on Sunder Armor. They have a lot of armor, they blunt your weapon swings, they have a lot of health, but they drop a lot of gold. They're absolutely worth killing. You'll get far more in the back section, but as you can see, the Doom proc that did 2100 damage didn't even take half its health. So these suckers have about 5k health, maybe a little more, 6. Worth killing, plenty of regs, high chance of magic items. But I'd say anybody can kill these demons. They're really not difficult, they're just tanky. And as far as I'm aware, they don't have a special. I haven't really seen him do anything other than cast magic and melee. I don't recall any of the hundreds, if not thousands, of these that I've killed to do the same thing. Almost done. Okay, so there's one more mob I want to show you on the way up to the end there, but we're going to go around the back way to get to the uh, the top of this location. It's the Flame Shaper. Let's see. Let's see. Where is he? Volcanic Familiar, too. So these guys right here, I don't mess with them. As a Dexter, the Volcanic Familiar is no fun. He does a consistent, like every five seconds AoE that will chunk me for half my health. It's just not worth the effort. There's plenty of mobs for me to kill. I just avoid it. Flame Shaper, I don't kill them ever. Don't bother with them. I'm going to pull one. If I die for the sake of the video, at least I got you guys an idea of what we're dealing with here. Dead. I might lose my staff, but there you go. You guys can see the lethality of SSC. I probably won't get a res. I'm going to hit Horseshoe Bay and come right back down after gearing up. Sucks dying as a Dexter, though, guys. I don't recommend it. I should have cut south, too, but the angle it was, I wasn't really sure. But there you go. That's why I don't mess with flame, sh flame shapers at all. Now, if you're a bard, if you're a summoner, you've got way more tools in your kit to deal with them. As a straight dexer, I do not. All right. I'm going to get some bandages. I'm actually going to run down there and see if I can get my stuff. I doubt it. But maybe, just maybe, you guys. Just make it. All right. So as I'm running, I'll get into it a little bit more. SSC, in my opinion, it should be your go-to dungeon. You should find a way to get to the point where this is where you can farm. Now, that's until the dungeon rework, which is on the way. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know about you guys, but I did test it out. Uh-oh. Close. Perfect bandage timer. <laughs> oh. Oh. We're going to try a different route. Perfect. Look at that. So yeah, getting back to it, I would highly recommend getting to a point where you can farm SSC consistently. You may be comfortable in Aegis. Mausoleum's easy. Darkmire's interesting. You like the poison aspect. I get it. To each their own. But if you're out for gold, you're out for experience, this is the place to go. SSC, 100%. There's no doubt about it. All right. Someone got my staff, it looks like. That's okay. 
Oh, they didn't. Perfect. Well, I got to show you guys what a flame shaper does, and I also died. I guess they got my gold. <laughs> They're welcome to have it. All right, so let's go around the back. After I get geared up, aspected up. Am I all good here? I believe I'm all good. I think I remember Luffy Taro here. Nice guy. All right. So that was the last mob I truly wanted to show you in that section. I don't really go that far up. I don't find it's worth the effort. I'd have to run circles around the flame shaper. Not really all that fun. Um, you're timing it. I think he, he sticks out those flame walls every 10 seconds or so. And they're lethal. Three hits and I was down. Okay. We're in the courtyard. <laughs> Another very lethal section. I've had my fair share of deaths here uh, by this one specifically, the Marksman, which I'm going to show you all in a moment. First, though, we are going to pull this Lancer. I'm going to show you what he does. Charges. Hits fairly hard. I'm going defensive. Just to give you an idea of what you're dealing with, we got our proc. I'll finish them off. Why not? Um, while we're looking up and over here, you've got your Grave Bug, your Death Cap looking guy, and your Soldier's Widow. Grave Bug, easy. Go for it all day long. Does a minor disease, nothing to really worry about. Oh, you know what? I lost my bag with my rares, didn't I, guys? Oh, well. Who's a core? No. Extract and one Shadow Spire Cloth. Congratulations to whoever got it. These two are not really an issue. One is essentially just a mage with an AoE. The other just puts a disease and is really tanky. They both drop a thousand gold plus, just like everything else down here. And while we're killing the marksman, I'll explain it. He shoots a volley. There's a few different mobs that are like this. Again, defensive swing, air stance, full plate armor, and bulwark. And I still get a little nervous with these guys. So I have all those defensives activated, and he's still hitting me for four to five. But that's all he does. If you can find a way around that, you're good to go. Now getting back to these guys here, the Corpse Flower and the Death Cap are both very tedious mobs to kill. This, the Death Vines, very much like the Grave Bug, just tanky, very much like the Lancer. It's going to summon some extra vines, nothing to worry about. They're junk, they don't really hit for anything. However, again, the Death Cap and the Corpse Flower. The Corpse Flower... I believe puts out a disease and it hits hard or it's a poison it's one of those abilities it will chunk you and the I believe it's the death cap no corpse flower asphyxiate it's not a disease it's not poison it's nothing you can really do uh, about that other than have defensive things activated just to reduce the damage it's just going to hit you and it can be up to 60 damage in one hit usually at the end of it Hits you about once every 10 seconds or so. Uh, the other one, I believe, is the death cap that poisons or diseases. That will chunk you for 15 to 20 a tick as well. The next mob down here is the Bard. The Bard's a caster. Hits pretty hard. What he's going to do is play his little music like that. And then that isn't me. <laughs> Despite what that guy thinks right now. That ain't me. Uh, so you're going to be paralyzed for a few moments. And then a clone of yourself or your pet, anyone else around, is going to run around and attack anybody it can. It's going to be acting like your typical wild mob. And that's it to that. Again, the marksman. And once this guy's down, guys, that's the courtyard. I've got to be honest. I'm not doing you all any favors by showing you how much damage I'm reduced in, in terms of what I'm taking how much I've reduced it by, but keep in mind all of these are lethal other than the Grave Bug, the Death Vines, then it goes to the Soldier's Widows next up along with the Lancer, then everything else you see can and will kill you. But great spot to farm nonetheless. SSC mobs are all a challenge, keep that in mind. That was the mini boss room we were just in. We're going to check out the main boss room. I'm not going to stick around here. I have no interest in killing the main boss even if he's up. I've had plenty of experiences with this boss. It's not fun, guys. It's it's probably the worst boss encounter in the game. <laughs> That's not to say it wasn't designed well. They did a fantastic job with the way it looks. The mechanics are cool. It's just, I'm going to be honest with you, a pain. 
It's awful. The amount of times you're going to die doing that, boss, you're going to die. Don't look at me and say, oh, I'm not going to die, Stroll. I had no way. No, you're going to die. And you're going to die a lot. I think the first time I ever did that, boss, it took us three hours maybe with roughly 20 people. I'm not going to get into the details, uh, but I refuse to do that boss again. Okay, so we're in the back of level two. And we got here by going through level two, out to three, through the courtyard, which is three, up to the mini boss room, through the boss room, up the stairs, to the very back of two. I prefer going that route because I don't have to deal with all the flame shapers, which killed me earlier. I don't have to deal with the, the devil guys. Um, none of that. So what I'm going to do here is pull a pontiff. These guys are nasty. Hopefully I don't die here. Jake Paul is always back here. Man, is a machine. I would say these are the most difficult mobs in SSC, outside of some of them through the portals. I'm not going to go over the portals today. I would like to. I don't think it's worth the time. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. The portals are randomized. They pop up at intervals. Other people could have just cleared it. You have things like Old Britain Bank. Uh, they go from the old game. It's Easter eggs, right? They've got Old Deceit with the Lich Lord. Ancient Lich, I think, is what they are. They've got Orc Camps, Apocal Demons, Mage Towers, Little Lore Notes. I think they have a Demonic Lord British of some form hidden down there. It's pretty fun. If you haven't done it, go check it out. Don't go with anything good. You're going to die. I'm just going to say it again. You're going to die. All right, so to go over the Pontiff, what you just watched was roughly same amount of health maybe as one of the demons. Uh, maybe not. Close to it, though. <clears throat> a ton of magic damage. And one crazy ability. It's that big, giant purple orb you saw that does AoE damage. One time our guild was doing a caravan. Not too long ago, either. We had five pontiffs spawn on top of each other at a section where we were all at a bridge. What that means is the caravan was blocking the other side of the bridge, so everybody was stuck on there while I was tanking five pontiffs and blood armor, full defensives. I've got six guys dumping heals into me. I still died. Why? Because they all shot those big purple orbs of doom at the bridge and wiped out ten people in two seconds. <laughs> pontiffs are no joke, but I love killing them. I don't have a problem usually solo with them. But if you're not prepared to go full defensive or have a way to LOS that big purple AoE, you're likely going to die too. Now they drop roughly 2,500 gold, a bunch of regs, high chance of magic items. And I'm going to go over a few more mobs you guys didn't get to see down here that are fairly trivial uh, for the average player. One to avoid, and the other I would farm, recommend farming at least. I would avoid the Horned Beast if you don't think you have the ability to dodge a Growl effect which shoots out, a, just for the sake of visualization, a diseased ball of bugs. <laughs> I don't know how else to call it. That's what it looks like. It looks like he's throwing just a nasty, gross ball of diseased, disgusting insects at you. That's not the problem, though. It'll hit you for 30 damage a tick, and it'll tick every two to three seconds. I think it's three seconds. So unless you have a way to reduce disease damage or just damage in general or can heal through it, which most people cannot, it's going to get you. One spawns right here, as you can see. Corrupted Horn Beast right there. There's the Stone Familiars. Really trivial. They do one ability. It's called Slam's Earth. It's probably not the name of it, but that's what it says above its head. Take one step any other direction. You could even walk into the monster if you want. It's only going to hit the tile you were standing at when it procs it. It takes one or two seconds to actually go through. They drop about 900 to 1,000 gold to kill. I'd say they are the easiest mob down here, by far. And the last mob is the Angelic Stonework. Uh, we saw one over by the Pontiff. Those are out in the wild, uh, in the overworld as well. They put a bleed on you. It's maybe 15 damage a tick. It's really not difficult. You can deal with it, no problem. I recommend farming them as well. They drop good gold, about 1,300 to 1,500 to kill. And that's SSC, guys. I really can't think of anything else other than those portals, which... I was going to do a whole separate video on, but now that I'm talking about it, let's go check out one portal. Why not, guys? Just so you can see it, I'm not going to go through all of them. I may not even do a video on it. I'm just going to go ahead, hit a portal, 
And there's usually one up in here with a pontiff and a horn beast. I don't have a rope. We're going to avoid running up through there real quick and go up here and see if we can find another one. I just want to show you what it's like. And these are the stone familiars that I was talking about, you guys that drop a, um, what would you call it? Delayed single target massive ability. The Terrathin Room. I don't recall if these poison. Uh, it's also been farmed already, so someone's been down here. And again, these are all random. I don't get to pick what I go into. Let's see. Is anything hidden here? That is not what I wanted to do. I have not seen him yet, and I don't think I stand a chance. Um, but that's a mini boss, or boss if you will. I have seen someone solo it before on video as a poison necro. I don't know if you just saw that, but I lost 90% of my health with one ability. To end this video, <laughs> I'm going to try to kill it. I don't think I have enough bandages though. All right, I'm going blood through and through. Two reasons. The bleed damage over time, it's gonna help out a lot. And the extra health. So this way I can go full defensive and not stress too much. So let's get a stamp pot going. Actually, I don't have any. The guy took my bag with my rares in it. We're going to do it anyways. I may lose a whole suit of armor. Oh, wait. I can't. I already left the room. All right. I don't know how strong these mobs are either, you guys. So I guess that's what we're going to get here. Is this where uh, Lord British is? The demon Lord British? I don't know what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> All right. I assume this poet here is a lot like a bard. He's got the same loadout, a lantern. A book. There you go. There is a anti straw hat right there. Let's give this guy a try. I actually haven't killed any of these yet because this is the first time I've been in this room specifically, and that was the first time I've seen the time weavers. Or rather, the only time weaver. Alright. Might as well go over it. Real quick, the benefits of blood, air, void, everything I'm doing here, but we'll just stick with blood for right now. When I am going to a dungeon or a location that I am not too comfortable with, not too familiar with the mobs, I don't know what they're going to be hitting me for, what to expect from them. Oof, 2,000 gold is pretty good, huh? I usually go full defensive and I go blood armor. It's the same reason I did it, and I was saying why I went this for the, the Time Weaver back there. I get an extra 32 health. I get extra mana so I can stance dance, if you will, if I need to with the codexes. In other words, it's not necessarily a fail-safe, but it gives me more wiggle room in case something does go down and I'm about to get wrecked by something. It may not happen, because I have that extra 32 health for As you see, Bandage Timer just started. Perfect time to drop a five cost heal. That way if I do get chunked again, probably won't die. All right. I know this can't be the most entertaining content, guys, but just for the sake of the portal room, I figure I'll kill a few. It's my first time down in this section too, and I'm fairly certain Ooh, look at that gold. 3,192 off one kill. Goodness gracious. There he is, the Weeping King. Okay, that's what we're going to attempt to do. I'm going to ask the Alliance if they think I can actually solve this. That was a mistake, by the way. I should have been LOSing from the start, not giving that an opportunity to kill me. We've got five seconds on it. I'm going to run up, tag them, get defensive, stand still. Banish timer went off. Perfect. And with this guy, I feel like I really don't need to pay too much attention now that I'm running blood. I'm running defensives. i got my bandage timers going. 
just chill, right? We'll try to kill the Weeping King, guys. We're going to go for it. I'm working to it. Working to it. Oof, that gold's crazy. This might be the best little farming spot I have found. Now, granted, unless you got a pack horse, you're not getting out of here with much. Just getting back, good luck, I guess. I've never been able to, like, duplicate a path. It's all random. Anytime you go through a dark portal, could hit any of the, I'm assuming there's eight to ten different ones, and I don't think they're always open. That was the first time I've seen the time we were, the first time I've seen this room, and I've been through these 50 to 60 times. Asking the guild. Maybe somebody knows if we can solo the Weeping King. I, he may not even be attackable, to be honest with you guys. I would assume he is. Wow. I didn't think I was going to get 4,000 gold in the kill, but... Why not? Okay, what do we got here? He's up top. All right. Here we go, guys. This is... I think this is really stupid. <laughs> oh no okay well guys ssc in a nutshell huh? um don't go here and don't attack that guy but do go to ssc and make a lot of gold and have a good time i think ssc is probably the most enjoyable dungeon as well uh the most goofy stuff goes on down there. You've got people role-playing as police. You've got reds coming in. You've got thieves like you wouldn't believe. You're walking down that hallway, you best believe there's three people stealth within ten tiles of you at all times. Pulling mobs into people you don't like, go for it. I don't typically do that, um, but I do find that when people try to steal kills from me when I'm leveling a new aspect or something, I do get to have a little fun down here by pulling mobs their direction or switching my aspect and stealing their kills. A little bit of drama, why not? Um, SSC, honestly, it's the most enjoyable dungeon. I highly recommend once you're comfortable with the other ones or get aspect to say eight or higher, depending on your build or template, head on down, try it out. Don't come down here with the best gear. Um, go defensive, be on the lookout for stuff. You'll have a good time. All right, guys, uh, I did plan to do Nacero before SSC, but with the dungeon rework on the horizon, I think I'm going to hold off on Nacero and wait for that change to get that all done in one shot rather than give you an idea of what Nacero is about now, only to have them change it. And keep in mind, everything's available on Test Center. If you want to go test your builds out, you can get on there. Uh, set your skills using the statues at the Upper Prevalia Bank. Get all the items you need from the shelf there. Type bracket go and pick your dungeon or hit the red portal right next to the fountain to pick your dungeon you want to go to and go test it out. All the updates are live. I personally found it to be a little bit more enjoyable. I don't think the difficulty's gone up too much for my character, uh, my build, my style of play. It's just increased the time it takes to kill things. You might have a different experience. All right, guys, till the next video. Have a good one.